the visual reflexes effect a variety of responses to visual stimuli. For example, changes in pupil size and lens curvature, movements of the eyes, eyelids, and even other parts of the body, for example, in shrinking from a blow. The pupillary reflex causes the pupil to constrict in bright light, thus protecting the retina from unwelcome radiation. Impulses generated in the retina by light travel through the optic tract to the pretectal nucleus in the midbrain, and then in short secondary fibres to the Edinger Westphal nucleus. Traversing the third nerve, they synapse in the ciliary ganglion and travel in the short ciliary nerves to the sphincter pupillae. If light enters one eye, both pupils normally constrict. The reflex constriction in the illuminated eye is direct. In the other, it's consensual. It is always bilateral because of crossing in the chiasma and because fibres from either optic tract pass to both pretectal nuclei. Pretectal lesions may eliminate the pupillary reflex but leave other reflexes intact. The accommodation reflex increases lens curvature and mediates pupillary constriction for near vision. Pupillary constriction reduces spherical aberration by barring light from the lens periphery. Retinal impulses via the optic nerve and tract reach the lateral geniculate body, then traverse the optic radiation to the visual cortex. From here, they're relayed in the superior longitudinal fasciculus to the frontal cortical eye field, and then through the internal capsule to the third nerve nucleus. From the ventral part of the nucleus, fibres pass to the medial recti, which converge the eyes. The Edinger Westphal nucleus sends fibres via the ciliary ganglion, where they synapse, then to the ciliary muscle to thicken the lens, and to sphincter pupillae to constrict the pupil. These three responses together constitute near synkinesis, the mechanism of near vision. The repertoire of movements of human eyes is a crucial part of the complex and precise process of hand-eye coordination.